I've seen it, uh, I've read some of it, and it's fine. Did they say economic impact is devastating? Yeah, I don't believe it. You don't believe it? No, no, I don't believe it. All right, that's President Trump not believing a dire report from 13 federal agencies in his own administration, aided by 300 leading scientists, all of which predict that climate change will cause environmental and economic devastation in America by the end of this century. Joining us now is one of the scientists who helped write that report, Catherine Hayhoe. She's the director of the Climate Science Center at Texas Tech University. Catherine, great to have you with us, and we're so glad that you can help us sift through all this because it's more than a thousand pages, and so we need your help boiling it down. But it just gets more and more disturbing the more you dive into it. Here are some of the findings. Higher temperatures are already happening. They will increase deaths. Food and waterborne illnesses will spread. Wildfires, as we've just seen so painfully in California, will increase. Floods, as we've just seen after hurricanes, will be more frequent. Asthma and allergies will be worse. Crop production will decline because of high temperatures and drought. Seafood industry predicted to lose 230 million by the end of the century. It, it is, it's all so dire. What are we missing? What do you think the headline from this report is? What we're missing is the fact that climate is already changing and it's affecting us today in the places where we live. It's no longer a future issue. Today, in some places in coastal Florida, property prices have already dropped 7% along the coast compared to just inland. Wherever we live, whether we're subject to wildfire, hurricanes, um, heavy precipitation, flooding, heat waves, we are already experiencing the impacts today. And so when you hear President Trump say, I don't believe it, I don't believe it. I know that, I mean, you've said something funny previously where it's like not believing in gravity. If climate change doesn't care if you believe in it or not. It's still happening. But what does it mean for the rest of us that he doesn't believe in it? Could some of this stuff be staved off if our leader believed in it? Carbon emissions are kind of like smoking. The best time to stop is now. If we can't stop now, then as soon as possible. So every year that continues without serious action to reduce and eventually eliminate our carbon emissions is another year of guaranteed impacts further down the road. And so, I mean, since you're so steeped in this material, when you hear the president say he doesn't believe it, how does that make you feel? It makes me feel frustrated because, again, you can say, I don't believe in gravity, but if you step off the cliff, you're going down. So we can say, I don't believe climate is changing, but it's based on science. It's over 150 years old. And if we're making decisions that don't just affect us, but that affect hundreds of millions of people based on flawed or faulty information, the result is not going to be good. You know what the skeptics say. You've, I'm sure you've heard it a million times. They think that all of you scientists are self-interested, you're doing this because you're bankrolled uh, by other people, um, that some of your predictions in the past haven't come true, therefore you're, I guess, delegitimized. Here are, just yesterday, what some of the skeptics said. Listen to this. A lot of these scientists are driven by the money that they receive. The report is nothing more than a rehash of age-old 10 to 20-year uh, assumptions made by scientists that get paid to, to, uh, uh, to further the politics of, of global warming. We have created a climate change industrial complex in this country with billions and billions and billions of dollars at stake. A lot of people are getting really, really, really rich off the climate change issue. Catherine, are you just rolling in the dough? Is that why you're doing this? You're just cashing in? Rolling on the floor laughing is more like it. I got paid zero dollars to write this report. My, my salary would have been exactly the same if I had or hadn't. And if I were studying astrophysics like I used to, I'd probably get exactly the same salary as well. The reality is I've found is that people often accuse us of doing what they would do themselves in our position. If we just cast our eye down the richest corporations in the entire world on Wikipedia's list, the vast majority of those owe their wealth to fossil fuels, so therefore they have a vested interest in maintaining the status quo as long as possible. Catherine, I think that it's hard for, even for regular people, even people who aren't skeptics, to know what to believe because it's also overwhelming. It's also, it makes people feel powerless, so it's easy to turn away from this. When, what will happen? I mean, what do you want people to know in terms of if we do nothing by 2050, say, what will our lives look like? 
The most important thing I think to know is that our choices matter. A certain amount of impacts are inevitable because of what we've done before. It's as if we've been smoking a pack of cigarettes a day for several decades. But the most serious and dangerous impacts are not here yet, and they can be avoided. How? By acting. What's the first step? The first step is actually to talk about it. Because studies have shown that three quarters of Americans don't even hear somebody else talk about it more than once or twice a year. I'm not saying we have to dive deep into the science, but this report, the National Climate Assessment, offers a great opportunity for us to say, hey, I live in the Northeast, the Midwest, the Southwest, Texas, Florida, Louisiana, and here's what's already happening in the places where we live. Here's why it matters to us personally, not the polar bears, not future generations, but us. And then it's important to talk about what we can do about it. The fact that in Texas, we have 25,000 jobs in the wind energy industry already. The fact that the coal mining museum in Kentucky put solar panels on the roof. The fact that our economy can continue to grow and thrive as we transition to clean energy. Catherine Hayhoe, it is so helpful to hear that it is not hopeless. Thank you very much for sharing your science with us. Thank you for having me. John. I love the idea of like a bunch of billionaire scientists like rolling around in cash at some exclusive club somewhere <laughs> for studying climate change. I know. I mean, when she she actually could break it down for you after she got a million dollar grant to do research. At the end of it, after paying facility fees, administration fees, she got two thousand dollars. Fascinating to hear that perspective.